initiative, and I was, I've been with him in Washington, been with him in Olympics, I've been with him in Dublin, but my favorite story with John is when he was with a group of folks on a factory floor recounting his own background of how he got started on the factory floor. And you know, Lori Coster once said, but from man packing, these fields are our factories. So now John's where he likes to be, on the factory floor. And one of the reasons he likes factory floors is he knows the best ideas and innovation come from the factory floor. And Steve, what I like about what you did today is you organized our factories and the people who are in them every day because that's where the best ideas come from, that's where new companies come from, and that's, that's how business grow and flourish. And he's one of the best in the game in the world, and he's really pleased to have an opportunity to meet the people who make it happen because this is where new companies are going to come from, wealth is going to be created, and the prosperity of the valley will be assured. So with John, with that, John, it's always great to welcome you, welcome you into the summit and the valley. Thanks, Dennis. Good to see you. Getting in front of us there, listen to all this introduction, you know. Uh, Dennis, thanks for, thank you very much. And uh, there's plenty of seats here in front. I, I remember when I was at school, I used to always stay at the back, but you know, you learn a lot more in the front. Um, first and foremost, thank you for having me here, Steve. Um, it's my first. I passed through uh, Gonzales a lot of times, but I've never actually uh, spent time here, so I'm delighted to delighted to be here with you. And I also wanted to try and keep this as informal as possible as well. So if you want to ask me any questions in terms of what I'm doing, please do so. I know we've kind of got a question and answer, answer session uh, at the end. Now, Steve, question is, have you got that computer oh, working? You know, right <laughs> okay, so um, maybe just to kind of give you some background while he's getting, the, getting it set up here. Um, Dennis, uh, who I've known for probably five or six years, uh, came to me um, about three years ago, and there was a challenge in Salinas, and the challenge was Capital One Bank were actually coming, were pulling out of the, uh, out of the city. Uh, I think, as you know, it's a pretty major impact. There was 850 uh, people made unemployed, 850 people, or 850 families impacted by this. A pretty major uh, impact at the time. And uh, I came down and I met with Dennis and I met with um, Ray Corpus, the city manager, and really to kind of look at what should we be doing, and. You know, the first thing we were looking at is how do we get a replacement for Capital One? And we went out to the buildings and we looked at the buildings that they have, we met Capital One, and it all looked really, really good. And it was really only until I started to kind of look at what's really happening here, it was very obvious to me, and maybe it's easy from the outside looking in, that the real strength of this valley is agriculture, and the real opportunity in this valley is agriculture. The strength of the people, the strength of the industry, it's, you know, if you look at the the region here, it's an eight and a half billion dollar uh, you know, business. The challenge that I saw on the outside looking in was the same messages weren't kind of getting around the world or getting around the US in terms of the strength and the capability that's here. And likewise, um, it was a very, I looked at, again, from the outside in, it seemed like a very siloed um, you know, <coughs> set of organizations and companies and individuals when there's really a great opportunity to really collaborate uh, you know, based on, on, on what we're doing. Very well done, Steve. Perfect timing. <laughs> and uh, you know how to press the button? Uh, yes. <laughs> so that's Steve going to be my, my right hand man here. Um, so we, we, we came up with the whole idea of really focusing on, on, on ag and really focusing on, on innovation. You know, why are the two of these you know, so important? If you look at any country in the world, if you look at any location, innovation is really leading the way in terms of the next big thing. And innovation is not just for you know, mobile phones or computers, it's, it's about agriculture. And we really took a hard look at, at the impact of, of ag and in the innovation space. Likewise, you know, you're only one hour, actually one and a half hours south <laughs> of, of, of Silicon Valley, which is the hub of the world or, or the, the largest technology hub in the world. And again, an observation from the outside looking in, you might as well be, and I hate saying this, on the other side of the planet, because the connection between here and Silicon Valley just wasn't there. And I think it's a huge opportunity on your doorstep. Likewise, it's a huge opportunity on major ag companies uh, in Silicon Valley to have 
such a strength in agriculture just south of Silicon Valley. So really, there was a, a lot of the ingredients here and a lot of what we've done really is just kind of put this together as part of a strategy. And I'm going to go through and maybe give you an update in terms of the, uh, the Steinbeck Innovation Cluster. The reason that we call it Steinbeck and not Salinas or not something else was we wanted to be open, we wanted to be a regional approach. If we start working on initiatives that's just one city or one town at a time, it becomes a very small project. If we take something that's you know, a region, it really embraces and opens up everything and that's why we call it Steinbeck. Likewise, the Steinbeck name is a name that's known the world around. You know, people in Japan, in Ireland, which is the best place in the world, obviously I'm biased, uh, or in Europe, um, you know, Steinbeck is very well known, so it's a great asset that you have uh, to identify. And innovation, obviously, innovation is really kind of the core of what we're, tra what we're trying to do. And then obviously, um, the idea of a cluster, clusters are basically major hubs around the world that are leading the world in particular areas. Silicon Valley is probably the best example of that, where it's really, it's, it, you know, it didn't just happen to form, it, you know, it, it took over 70 years to develop but it's created one of the strongest economic engines in the world. Just to kind of give you an idea, I know you've passed up and down there between San Francisco and San Jose, the combined market cap of, cap of the companies that are there is $2.5 trillion. Um, I mean, that's a pretty amazing number, $2.5 trillion. Just to give you, uh, like when I talk about this in Ireland, Ireland's entire GDP for the entire country is 170 billion. So just to kind of give you the scale of, of what's actually just north here, and if you look over the last you know, four or five decades, everything associated with innovation has started in Silicon Valley. Whether it's Silicon Valley itself being the Silicon chip, where you have the likes, leaders like the likes of Intel, for example, to computing, where you have the likes of IBM, HP, to um, you know, laptops, mini computers, uh, obviously Apple, but also you look at what's happened in the last 10 years, our entire world has changed in terms of how we communicate over the last 10 years by companies that didn't exist 10 years ago. And how we communicate, whether it's Twitter, I'm sure all the ladies here and the guys use Twitter or Facebook, these are all things that just didn't exist a very short time ago, yet billions of people around the world are use, using this to communicate. The same evolution is going to happen in terms of, uh, of ag, and I'll try to walk through this you know, with you here. So that's the whole idea on, the, uh, on this. Um, there was four parts of this uh, cluster that we really wanted to build, and working with the, the city and also working with key leaders in, in the community. Uh, you know, we've worked with um, Bruce Taylor from Taylor Farms, we've worked with the team at Ocean Mist, we've worked with uh, Driscoll, Dole, a lot of the big names that you know in the, in, in the region here, really to help us develop this, uh, this strategy and, and, and get, get all the folks very much on board. You know, the first part really is innovation. And um, you know, that's all about creating a pipeline of, of opportunity or a pipeline of technology. And it's not just technology, it's the people that create technology. And that was where we focus. Um, the people that create companies are entrepreneurs. The people that start young coding or start young doing technology are <coughs> young kids. So we focused on young kids uh, from an innovation perspective. We ran a program in Hartnell uh, College uh, over a year ago, and today we've, we've trained over 300 kids between the age of 12 and 16 to develop uh, technology and code. Likewise, entrepreneurs, it's, entre it's an entrepreneur that starts up the company, you know, takes the sleepless nights of, what am I gonna do tomorrow about paying bills? What am I gonna do tomorrow about raising money? How am I gonna grow a business? That's not something that just happens or you're, you're necessarily born with. And one of the leading programs uh, in the world um, that is, is driving entrepreneurship um, as a training or a, an educational topic is the Kaufman program and we just ran the Kaufman program just over a year ago and we, um, we basically graduated 27 entrepreneurs uh, in, in the region here all around the, the Salinas uh, city and, and, and broader area. And then likewise innovation also starts in universities. You know a lot of the technologies that you see that happen in universities ultimately go into business and um, but it takes some time. You know, businesses tend to pull the opportunity out of the universities, and the universities tend to kind of do a lot of the work. So there's great relationships with some of the universities in the region here, but we wanted to develop a more strategic relationship, and we developed relationships with nine universities um, that are 
heavily focus on ag. Obviously, UC Davis, as you probably know very, very well. Obviously, local locals like CSUMB, obviously Hartnell, Arizona State University, Georgia Tech, a number of universities that are leading the way in sensors uh, in Europe. And we formed a partnership and signed MOUs with those comp those those universities because their deployment of their technology is going to happen in the field. It's not going to happen in a lab in a research. Uh, you know, institute, and that was the partnership that we have because we have the factories here, or as Dennis said, or we have the fields here. For ultimately, all the technology associated with food is actually going to get developed there. So that's on the innovation side, really kind of opening up that whole pipeline. The second thing is on acceleration. Um, you know, in Silicon Valley and all over the world, you hear about uh, uh, incubators, accelerators. These are open areas where young entrepreneurs, uh, university uh, researchers, etc., uh, run programs where they develop companies, develop project, projects. They're all over San Francisco, Palo Alto, Mountain View, San Jose, etc., and right across the world. But there's none that's focusing on ag tech. And we had the idea about why don't we create a hub and an innovation accelerator here in Salinas here right in the heart of, 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 of the ag world. And that's what we're doing. We're actually opening up one of these um, in partnership with a number of the major companies because innovation centers can work if they're commercially orientated. If they're not commercially orientated, they tend to fail. So it's all about research and you, you, you build lots of white papers. That's great, but it ultimately doesn't create jobs and doesn't create businesses. So really the, the key to the innovation center that we're building is this connectivity into companies like you know, Taylor, Dole, Driscoll, you know, all Ocean Mists, Dorigo, all the, the names that you know well here. So the idea here is kind of creating that accelerator. The next thing is investment. If you don't have investment, you have great ideas and great people, but if somebody isn't placing the bet in terms of supporting your opportunity, it's just not going to happen. And it's one of the cornerstones of Silicon Valley. Just to give you an idea, I mentioned the number in terms of the, the, the market cap of companies that are in Silicon Valley. But the money that goes into companies is coming from venture capital. Venture capital is kind of a high risk investment where um, investors are, are betting on entrepreneurs and, um, and their companies. 40% of all venture capital in the United States is invested in Silicon Valley one and a half hours north of here. The next closest to that in terms of investment is uh, Boston. And Boston is about 11% of all venture capital invested in the United States. And after that is New York, which is about 10%. So there's twice as much invested in Silicon Valley than there is in both Boston and New York combined, the, the next closest. Again, that's equivalent to about seven billion dollars that's invested in companies just one and a half hours south of here. So guess what? Wouldn't it be really good if we're connected in there so we can get a piece of the action? That's why we really wanted to try and link in with Silicon Valley from an investment perspective. Also, uh, investment from companies like the likes of a Driscoll or a Taylor, etc. Getting those companies in the game in terms of investing in ag and innovation in ag is a key part of what we're doing. So we're working with them to develop a fund that would be here that we would invest in companies, young entrepreneurs. So if there's people here that have great ideas or want to do something, we want to hear from you because we want to help you in terms of the accelerator perspective and potentially invest, um, obviously, if it's a great idea. And so that's the whole, you know, the, the first three parts. And then the final part is really around corporations. You know, again, if you're, if you're not connected to major companies, whether they're big companies here, like the guys I've mentioned in the, in the ag space, or whether it's big companies that are in the ag world, whether it's the likes of um, you know, John Deere, or it's DuPont, or big companies in Silicon Valley that are, that are driving in this space, you know, you're kind of out on your own. So the connection into those big companies really, is really, really important. So that's the whole concept of, of that. So Steve, that was uh, most of my work done. I'll fly through the next slides. Um, the, the, the vision really here is about the intersection between ag and, and innovation and technology. And also the intersection and the connection between Silicon Valley and Salinas Valley. Really kind of, if we can bring the two of these regions together, if we can really focus on innovation in the, in, in the ag space, what can we become as a, 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 as, a, as a region? Likewise, 
I mentioned earlier, you know, one of the challenges here is that it's a very siloed business, and you know, and you're no different than anywhere else. I know in Ireland, Ireland ag is a huge area. It all starts with families a hundred years ago that are now big corporations, and they keep things very, very tight. Yet innovation needs to be open to to really kind of develop and drive drive scale. So what we are driving to make this happen is really to galvanize the industry around innovation and around this you know this initiative and that's happening today all the big companies that I've mentioned earlier are all either involved supporting or are, are engaged with us with us here in terms of the um, the uh, the Steinbeck uh, innovation sorry mind away am I okay Steve um, we, we can fly through the, the, the next few, few slides. So, the opportunity, are we talking to ourselves here? I mean, are we all, you know, sitting in a field here thinking that this is a great idea and on our own? Well, the answer is no. This is probably the biggest opportunity in the world. If you look at the big macro stats uh, that are out there, you know, the, the world's population is gonna go from about seven billion people to nine billion people. The more interesting part of this is that um, middle class, the population of middle class in the world today is about 1.2 billion people. That's going to grow to 4.5 billion people. So that means there's almost like four times more demand for food. And guess what middle class people are very aware of? They're very aware of health. They're very aware of the importance of organics. They're very aware of fresh food. So your business has the opportunity to really you know, literally quadruple over this, you know, over this period of time. And the challenge is that, how are you going to deal with this? You know, there's only so much land, there's only so much um, capability that's there. If you look at the history of, of the ag world, all the nickels and dimes are taken out of the ag industry. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a business that's tight, it's a business that's competitive, and you, you survive based on your competitiveness. But tomorrow you're gonna to have to survive based on how you're innovating. And the companies that embrace innovation are going to be the companies that ultimately will survive and, and, and win here. So um, the next couple of slides are just really just showing you the, the scale of, of, of this growth that's there. So Steve, if you just want to, you know, that, that's the, the 9 billion that I talked about. So that the world's population, you can see, it's, it's growing, you know, incredibly. Obviously countries like China and India are a big, you know, fueling uh, the, the biggest part of this growth. And the challenges in those countries, specifically China, you know, the quality of food, the security of food, you know, it's a big issue there. Uh, I spoke to a friend of mine who lives in um, Shenzhen. He runs a major manufacturing company. He drives an hour and a half south down to Hong Kong to buy product, buy food. He buys it, he, he buys it. Why does he know one food is better than the other? He buys Driscoll's berries because he knows Driscoll's is a name that's high quality. You know, so you, you, you've got to, a sense of the, 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 the scale and the opportunity that's there and the brands that you have here. See, so just the next one is really middle class. Um, uh, that's probably a hard slide to see, but really the big picture is 1.5 billion going to 4.5 billion people. So that's, that's not just us thinking that this is a good opportunity. That's really the big macro picture in terms of the scale and the opportunity that's here. Next one, Steve. Um, I've explained this at a high level already. These are the four areas that I talked about earlier, and that's what we have been building over the course of the last two years. You know, the, the focus, you know, we could focus on a lot of things, and I think as you know, when you focus on a lot of things, you don't get a whole lot done. Um, so we need to focus on some of the key issues and challenges of the industry. I think water is, I'm glad water is on the top. Um, you know, we've got to focus on areas that can really set us apart. You know, water, um, obviously labor is implicit, I mean it's a, one of the biggest challenges for not just this region, for, for everywhere. Uh, so the areas of robotics, etc. Become, start, start to become very interesting uh, you know, for us. Energy waste are, are, are the other areas that are there. So these, this is the focus of what we're doing and these are the building blocks of, of, what, we, uh, of what we put together. And then the three uh, structures, we set up an innovation foundation. Um, since we started that foundation, it's a not-for-profit. Um, the focus of this is to support local entrepreneurs and education in the region. We've raised a million dollars already and we have educated 300 kids and we started the first 27 entrepreneurs on the road to success. And hopefully those, those 27 entrepreneurs create hundreds of jobs going forward 
and, and that's a big part of what that foundation is about.